Let's discuss specific main group element families. The alkaline metals tend to form plus one cations. They also react with water to form hydrogen and the metal hydroxide. They tend to form oxides directly from contact with oxygen. Sodium can also form sodium peroxide and potassium can form potassium superoxides. These elements are stored in anaerobic environments and away from water. For example, lithium, sodium, and potassium are often stored under kerosene. The alkaline earth metals have similar properties to the alkaline metals. They form plus two cations. Beryllium is inert to liquid water, and magnesium reacts vigorously with steam. Only calcium, strontium, and barium react with water to form metal hydroxides and hydrogen. These elements are not as reactive to water and therefore do not require special storage, other than radium, which is radioactive. And you can tell because it glows green in the dark. Radium was used for watch dials in the early 1900s. Group 3A metals react with oxygen to form metal oxides. They also react with acids to form plus 3 ions and hydrogen. Boron is the only metalloid in group 3. It reacts very vigorously with oxygen, as does aluminum. You can see that gallium has a melting point very similar to that of body temperature. Group 4 contains carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, and lead. Carbon has a special branch of chemistry called organic chemistry and will be discussed here. Silicon and germanium are metalloids. Tin and lead are the only metals in group 4A. These group 4A metals react with hydrogen ions to form the plus 2 ion and hydrogen. The plus 2 ion is the most stable form. The other form, plus 4, is much less stable. Carbon is shown here as graphite or diamond, the two most common allotropes of carbon. Silicon and germanium are metalloids, and tin and lead are metals. Group 5A elements contain nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, and bismuth. Nitrogen and phosphorus have oxides that react readily with water to form acids. These are called acid anhydrides, which means acids without water. Here we show nitrogen as a liquid, though it is usually a gas at room temperature. There are two allotropes of phosphorus, white and red, and then arsenic, antimony, and bismuth look very much like metals. However, bismuth is the only true metal. Arsenic and antimony are metalloids. Group 6A contains oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, and polonium. Again, the group 6A oxides form acid anhydrides. Here we show sulfur as S8, or yellow or flowers of sulfur. Selenium, which is also Se8, looks like a metal. However, it is a non-metal. Tellurium is the only metalloid in group 6. The group 7A elements react with hydrogen directly to form acids. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine form strong or mineral acids, whereas hydrofluoric acid, HF, is a weak acid. Here we see chlorine gas, which has a slight yellowish color, Bromine, which is actually a liquid, you can see the liquid here, but is readily evaporating into this brownish gas. And then iodine, which is a solid, which sublimes to a purple gas. The group 8A elements, the noble gases, have filled electron configurations of the NS and NP subshells. This gives them 8 valence electrons. This means that they tend not to accept new electrons and have very little ability to react. However, they have been made to react. 
Xenon, Krypton, and Argon have all been made to react. In order to make these elements react, we very often need to use fluorine in addition to other things like oxygen. Here we look at the oxide properties across a period. In period 3, sodium and magnesium form basic anhydrides, whereas aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine all form acidic anhydrides. Some anhydrides are also amphoteric, which means they can either act as an acid or a base, such as aluminum oxide can behave in an amphoteric fashion.